Good evening, everyone. This is Rose Emmett, business manager and board secretary. Um, just a reminder that this meeting is being recorded. We will have we have a an email account set up for public comment during the session. We are now live streaming, and it is public comment at westernwayne.org. What we'll do is once we get started into the presentation, um, we'll have board member comment throughout the presentation as needed. And then at the end of the session, we will open, I will review the um, any of the public comments that came in through the email address, and we'll talk about those that came through. Um, Bernice, if you want to get us started. Yeah, sure. Um, welcome everybody to the meeting this evening. I just would like to start off with a quick prayer and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and then head right into the meeting. So um, if we could just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just pray that tonight during this budget meeting that you will give us the wisdom and the knowledge we need to make the best decision for this district. Amen. If we could just stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty, justice, justice for all. Rose, do you want to do the roll call? Yes. Mrs. Fiorella? Here. Mr. Hulk? Here. Mr. Gogolski? Here. Mrs. DiCiato? Here. Mr. Enslin? Here. Mr. Gurney? Here. Mr. Carmina? Here. Mr. Auckland? Here. Mr. Wood? Here. Attorney Mayor? Here. Dr. Barrett, Dr. La Rosa, and myself are also present. Many of the other administrators are also joining in, and everybody does not have been excused. Thank you. Okay, we'll get started on the budget preview. Just a reminder, if any board member has questions during the session, please stop me and ask. Um, state your name at the beginning of the question, just so everybody knows who's asking the questions. This budget... Um, presentation is for Western Wayne School District for the 2021 school year. We've put together the sources of revenue, the expenditures by their major area and a summary of what's going on. Just a reminder that this budget preview is a working document and is subject to change. Um, as the information for each account is verified and approved and we get further instructions from the state, we will update this document. Revenues by source. So our, we have three different sources of revenue. We have local revenue, state revenue, and federal revenue. Our local revenue makes up 61% of our budget. And those local revenues entail property taxes, real estate transfer tax, interest on our, our funds in our banks, um, and also IDEA, which is federal or special ed funding that comes to us through intermediate unit sources, so through IU-19. So that is considered local because it is a pass-through funding. State funding makes up about 37% of our budget, and that includes um, basic ed subsidy, special ed subsidy, um, the state's share of retirement expense, social security, property tax reduction funds, transportation, early intervention, there are several items and I'll go into a little more detail with them in the next couple of pages. Federal money makes up just under 2% of our budget and that includes the funding for our title programs and also any money that we receive through the medical access program, which is uh, special ed funding. Sources of revenue in summary for the proposed budget for 2021, local revenue of $27.8 million, which is 61%. State revenue of $16.8 million, which is the 37%, and then federal revenue estimates of $832,000, which is the 1.8%. For 
for a total of this presentation of 45535961 in revenue. Our county assessments, full market value as of 2018, which is the most current data that we have available to us, is $1.7 billion in market value for the properties of Western Wayne School District. Assessed values for Wayne County, for Western Wayne School District in Wayne County, and this is as of four, which is as of April of this year, is uh, $1.6 billion. The value of a collectible mill is $1.5 million. Local, under the local real estate taxes, increased assessments. We had about $2 million in increased assessments um, from last year to this year, and that generated about 41,000 in tax revenue. Millage increase, um, the numbers that we have in this presentation do not include a millage increase. So I have a question mark there because that is something we will need to talk about towards the end of the presentation. But at this point, the, fi the figures that are been put into this as far as revenue does not include a tax increase at this time. Back in December, in January, um, the board did pass a resolution that we would not go above the index. The index, the Act 1 index for us is 2.6%. And if we needed, we thought we needed more than that for revenue, we would have to go for referendum exceptions. We did, we chose not to, we chose to stay within the index for the 2021 school year. So there's no referendum exceptions available to us this year. A summary of the state revenues. Um, for this presentation and so far for the budget, what I've done is I've kept the basic instructional subsidy and the special ed subsidy at our current 1920 revenue funding level. Um, those numbers listed there are the 5.4 million for basic instruction and the 1.2 million for special education instruction are the levels of, of funding that we're receiving during the 1920 school year. Um, underneath those numbers, you can see under basic instruction, there's a 32,456. That is what is proposed right now in the legislature. If, we, if they passed the proposed funding levels that they're talking about funding, that would give us an additional $32,000 for basic ed subsidy, same with special ed. If they pass the proposals that are out there right now, we would receive an additional $12,000. Um, that's what's out there right now for state funding. Plan con reimbursement, 540,000. That has been updated based on the expenses we will have during the 2021 school year. Early intervention kept at the um, 1920 level. We have not received any communication yet as to what our funding will be for the 2021 school year. So we're making the assumption it will be on par with what we have in 1920. Transportation, 2.9, um, kept this at the 1920 school year level also, but I think it'll be pretty accurate as to what will come back in based on the last couple of years of funding. We did receive um, under our notification on the property tax reduction we will be receiving $876,995 for, um, for property tax reduction. I'll go into that in further detail on a, on a future slide as far as how that affects each of the homestead and farmstead properties. But that's pretty level with what we've been getting over the last few years. Um, I think it was 876,900 this past school year. So it's very close to what we've been getting. Social security and retirement funding from state is based on our um, payroll expenses. So our salaries, the state reimburses us half of what our expenses are for social security and half of what our expenses are for retirement. So those figures there are half of our expenses during the year. And when we get to the expense side, you'll see the, the full amount of the expenses, expenditures we have under those two categories. Ready to learn money. Every indication that we, from the state is that we will continue to receive that funding and that it will be at the same level as the 1920 school year. So that's 239,000. The ready to learn funds are currently used to maintain our full day kindergarten program. That is something we've used the funds for since the beginning of that grant, um, which is several years now, it's probably been out there. I don't know exactly how many. 
Federal revenue. Final allocations have not been determined, but we do anticipate them to remain fairly level to the 1920 school year. So what I've done is used the current levels um, for this budget presentation so that our medical access reimbursement will be roughly 328,000. Federal programs funding will be around 504,000. And that 504 includes uh, Title IV money, which is $32,000 in this year. And then it also has us keeping our Title II funds. I know last year during the, the budget presentation, there was talk that the Title II funds were going to go away and that potentially the Title IV, but they did remain during 1920. And we have every indication at this point for 2021 that they will remain um, federal sources of revenue for us. Now we'll move over to the expenditure side. I'll give a breakdown of, of where we're on in, in expenditures. One way to break it down is to look at instructional expenses. Our expenditures, 56% of our expenditures are made up of instructional expenses. Those include salaries and benefits and classroom expenses for all of our teachers, our instructional aides, everything that is classroom related is under instruction. 32.9% is support services and included in support services would be our guidance departments, our nursing, our administration, our, um, our custodial and our technology department. All of that are considered support services and make up 32.9% of our budget. Student and community services make up 2% and that includes all our extracurricular activities for our students and our sports programs also. And then 8.7% is our debt service. That is um, our bond, outstanding bonds and the payments that we make on a yearly basis based on our outstanding bonds. A different way to break down the expenses are by the, um, the objects. So salaries make up 40, 40 and a half percent of our expenditures. 28% is spent on benefits. 4.7% is professional services. Um, 1.9% is property services. Property services are repairs and maintenance to buildings and to equipment that we have. Purchase services is 13% and that makes up um, outside placements for some of our students. Our charter schools come under purchase services and any travel that is that happens within any of our service groups. Supplies make up 2.4% of our budget. And equipment is 0.2%. Uh, we don't have a lot of equipment replace it, replacement listed in this budget. Uh, we've tried to trim some of that out um, just because of the, the situations that we're in right now. 0.2% is other fees, and th that is um, participation fees. And then 8.7 again is the debt service. Under our certified staff for this year, our teaching staff, we had two retirements this year in our high school art department and also our early intervention coordinator. So we did have um, those two retirements. We also had run resignation in our elementary music department. All three positions um, do need to be replaced. They are key areas for us and they are included in the expenses that we have listed in the budget. We did at our May 6th meeting, we hired Hannah Forns for our music department. So that position is filled. And just this week we have advertised for the high school art and for the early intervention coordinator. So we are in the process of accepting applications for those two positions at this time. Additional staff needs. Um, the life skills, we need to add a life skills classroom for our elementary students. I tried to put together, we've done a lot of talking about this over the last couple of weeks administratively. And I tried to put a little summary together of it, but um, let me just go over this a little and then I, I'm gonna turn it over to Jen Denyke to, to add to that. Jen Denyke is our special ed director and I'd like her to, to add a little to what I'm going to have here on the slide. Um, for the classroom, we would need one teacher and two full-time instructional aides. The cost breakdowns for what that would entail is for the teacher, 98,000 would cover the salary and benefits for that a position and then under the instructional aids an additional 89,000 that would cover the salary and benefits for two 
instructional aids for that classroom. Total expenses needed is 187,000. And that is not included in our current budget. So that is something we do need to consider and discuss and see what needs to be added. Um, part of the reason for that is because we have a lot of those students that would benefit from this classroom, we would need to place an outside placements if we did not form this classroom at this point. And in looking at the cost of those outside placements, they range anywhere from 35,000 to 90,000 per student based on the needs of the student themselves and what kind of additional services they would need. Dr. Barrett or Mrs. Denai, do, do either one of you like to add to that? Yeah, I, I can add that currently with the students that we have uh, placed out, uh, you know, there are 14 students between the uh, kindergarten and fifth grade that would uh, potentially be utilizing this classroom with this teacher. Um, so that, that's a significant amount of students. And uh, in looking at the cost for both New Story or the NEIU classrooms, Again, as Rose put in the presentation, that can range anywhere from thirty to ninety dollars per student per year, and that does not include the cost of transportation, et cetera. So, and there are ancillary costs that go along with that. So, in looking at the the cost effectiveness as well as uh, the benefit to for the students to remain within the district, um, we believe it would be highly valuable to have that person. At, in our district at, by adding, I know it's adding a position, but be, being that the students are so young at this point, uh, again, between kindergarten and fifth grade, I believe there are um, two, four, five kindergarten students, and then two, four first grade students, and the rest would uh, be made up of, of second, third, and fourth graders. Um, they're gonna be with us for an extent, a long time. Uh, it, during their tenure here at Western Wayne. So this is uh, definitely something I would uh, consider uh, due to the amount of cost that we have to absorb by sending them out to other placements. Dr. Barrett, this is Jennifer Denai. Can I just jump in as well? Um, absolutely, thank you, Jen. Absolutely. One of the things, and you you right, you nailed it on the head. We do have a projection of about 14 students K through five. Um, we are anticipating as well out of that 14 students, there is a student who would actually be returning to district. So is currently in outside placement. And with this classroom, we would be able to actually bring her back um, within district. So that is one thing. And um, another thing I just wanted to add too is in these costs, as Dr. Barrett was saying, they could range and fluctuate depending on specific needs that um, each student would have. It, we also aren't looking at the cost that would be in addition would be summer school, uh, the ESY program over the summer that both the New Story and the IU classrooms typically do offer for quite a bit of time um, over the summer, you know, potentially four to five days a summer, or excuse me, a week through the summer for at least a month or so. So that would be an additional cost that we would look at as well. Thank you, Jen. Uh, another benefit to the district is a uh, clear cut. Uh, you, you expect it to uh, be a, a benefit. And if I do the math, 35,000 for uh, 14 kids is $490,000. So it looks like it's going to well offset the cost, right? Yes, sir. Correct, Rick. And, and on top of that, uh, depending on the numbers that we have within the classroom itself, we would be able to open up that classroom to uh, the special ed consortium with Wayne Highlands and Wall and Paw Pack and actually offset the cost with the funds that would be uh, flowing through as a result of taking on those students. Yes. So uh, again, this is not a decision we have to make this evening. Uh, this is just something we wanted to uh, put out there for you to consider. 
so that we can begin to, uh, to prepare for next year and where these students uh, may be going. Hey, Matt, it's Joe. I just had a quick question. So the, the approximate 14 for next year, where are the 14 now or do we have them now or like are they going somewhere else? I'm not clear on that part. Um, I could answer that. Uh, right now, one of the 14 is currently enrolled in an outside placement. Um, like Dr. Barrett was saying, we do have um, five kiddos that are coming out of EI and in, so they would be part of that 14 as well. Okay. That would be into kindergarten, yeah. So yep. that's where the bulk of our kiddos are five, uh, excuse me, kindergarten and first. So they're coming up basically. Okay. Yeah, they're coming up. Okay. Okay, any other questions pertaining uh, to this proposal for the additional staff member? I have a question, this is Mike. Uh, how much is the transportation cost for one kid? Do we know? For that one kid we have to take the new story? I, I don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, just it, it depends on the location. So the NIU rates would be different than new story or we have to send the kid to uh, you know, to wilkes Bear for whatever reason, but um, I, I don't have the per day rate at, at the moment, Mike. I, I apologize. I can get that for you, though. I, I can tell you it's quite a bit, Mike. I, I know for a fact that transferring students, it's, um, you know, it could be $100 to $200 a day, you know, something like that. It depends, really. I, I'm not, don't hold me to those numbers, but it's quite a bit. It's, uh, yeah, I'm just doing some quick calculations here. 14 times 45,000 is like 630,000. And I want to apply as transportation. So I'm just trying to yeah. get uh, like a cost, an average cost. I mean, I know one of the lowest paying rates is like around $90 for 80 or $90. And that depends on how many kids are in the, the car, van, plus your mileage and fuel and everything's configured in. So, you know, you can figure a hundred bucks. That's the lowest rate, you know, that's. hundred bucks for a week or just every day for the kid? Every, I'm sorry, pay at, per day. Per day. per day yeah so that's why i figured it'd be 15 day pay period that's usually how it's figured just to give you a little bit of an idea I, like i said don't hold me to any of those numbers they might be off but that's an idea anyway that, joe that's 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 about right multiply that by 180 so yeah. you're, you're looking at quite a bit uh, this is rick Hogan. again this, this is an elementary position it will be uh which end of the district uh in uh, Evergreen or at RD? We're considering uh, RD Wilson. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, again, if you have any other questions and you wanna, uh, if you don't think of it now, you wanna send us an email or give us a call, we'd be happy to discuss it further. Um, but again, just something to think about in the meantime. Okay, we'll move on to our next item, which is additional staff needs. Um, at our Robert G. Wilson building, we're looking at the potential for needing an, an additional part-time kindergarten teacher. Uh, we're not at the point right now that we are definite that we need this, but it is something that we need to keep on our radar. Um, the enrollment numbers are looking like they're going to be higher than uh, what we have staff available for at this point. Uh, we also have an increase in our kindergarten program, but we think we can move some staff around to cover the increased enrollment in kindergarten. But um, based on what we have available staff-wise, now we don't feel we have the proper staff to, um, to mm -hmm fund that or to have this part-time kindergarten. Uh, if I may interject there, Rose, um, at our last staffing meeting, we did discuss uh, this potential that uh, currently we do have uh, this position as a long-term substitute. We added the half-time uh, position onto the art uh, position as a result of shifting of the half-time art person to the high school as a full-time but then because of our pre-K numbers being above uh, what the limits allow, uh, we had to increase that part-time person to long-term sub with the understanding that it would just be 
for this current school year. Uh, and, and then we would have to wait and see what the numbers would dictate thereafter. So currently we do believe that we, we may be able to shift effectively and, and provide enough coverage for both pre-K and kindergarten. Um, again, that's unless we have an influx of enrollments uh, over the course of the summer. So while this currently is not um, a, a demand right now or a need right now, uh, there is that potential and we just wanted to make you aware at the moment. Matt, is, this is Bernice. Is it possible to do another long-term sub on that for another year or no? That would be something we'd have to discuss um, with the association because I believe it would become a, a bargaining uh, situation, collective bargaining agreement uh, amendment, I guess. We would have to have maybe an MOU with them uh, pending enrollment for the next school year. But yeah, we, you know, that's something to consider, Bernice, for sure. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to our existing staff. Just a summary of where we're at um, administratively within the budget that we have currently We've added a 2.8% increase. And the reason we use the 2.8 is that it, it's still proposed at this point, it hasn't been brought to the board, but it is the same percentage increase as our current uh, teachers union contract that was negotiated and settled for the 2020, 2021 to the 24, 25 school year. Um, our professional staff is set at that 2.8, but that's under contract. Um, substitute rates kept at current year expenditures, the teachers and the guest teachers would both be at $120 per day. Um, extra duty and coaching and co-curricular, those items have also been settled with our current contract that we have that's going to go out to 2025. Clerical and instructional staff, this is something that is also proposed at a dollar per hour for each of those individuals. And that is based on what was uh, negotiated with the custodial and food service staff. So they're, they're, the custodial and maintenance staff will be receiving the $1 and the food service staff per hour. And we're proposing that, that the same amount be given to the clerical and instructional staff for the 2021 school year. Those are items that will be needed need to be presented to the board at the June board meeting, the administrative piece, and then the clerical and instructional piece. Under the benefits, I've listed here the, um, the different benefits and the cost to the district based on those, the health insurance. We are fortunate for the 2021 school year that our um, PPO rates through Highmark will not be increasing for next year. So they've been kept at level funds for the 1920 school year. And just to give you an idea of the cost of that, the overall cost to us is just over $5 million. Um, an individual person costs a little over $8,000. Husband and wife coverage costs $20,500 and family coverage is just under $22,000, just to give you an idea what the per family per person rates are. The expense above it does include a $100,000 decrease from retirees aging out. In our current contract, the one that, that finished with the teachers that ends this year, we did negotiate the, um, the end of covering healthcare for retirees. So over the course of several years, and we still have a few years left to go on this, um, as retirees age out of the plan, those expenses are recouped by the district. And that those factors have helped us to continue to pay salaries and to pay, continue to pay increases in other areas of our, of our expenditures. Life insurance costs us roughly Rose, about 18,000. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay, go Rose. ahead. I'm sorry, it's Bernice. I just wanted to um, 
go over, if you could do the figures for the single, the family and the husband and wife one more time, the cost for the health insurance, if you wouldn't mind, I'm sure. sorry. No problem. Um, an individual co coverage costs roughly $8,000. Husband and wife coverage okay. costs 20,500. And family coverage is just below $22,000. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. No problem. Social Security Medicare tax for us that costs us $1.4 million. And if you recall on the revenue side, half of that 50% of that over 700,000 comes back to us from state funding. Um, and the same with retirement. So our retirement expenses for the 2021 school year are going to be 34.5% of the salaries and for anyone that qualifies for the retirement system and that total expense is $6.5 million. Um, that also is half reimbursed from the state. So that about 3,250,000 will come back to us from the state for their share of that expense. Workers' compensation is based on our current mod factor, which at this point, I think we're decent on our mod factor. I don't think it's a uh, you know, we haven't seen large increases. We haven't had a lot of, of um, claims coming through and our current costs and roughly our estimate for next year's cost is about $208,000. And employment compensation will cost us about $38,500. Now we talked about um, the healthcare cost decreases of the 106, that's of the, the uh, retirees aging out. Their early retirement incentive in our current contract is 16.5 per year. And that's for uh, retirees who qualify for that benefit for the early retirement incentive. In the new contract that does start with the 2021 school year, that rate will go to $19,000 per year for a maximum of five. And it depends on their qualification, how much of those Five, they get anywhere from one to five years. Purchase services, probably the biz, biggest expense we have under the purchase services is our charter schools. Uh, we have roughly 75 to 80 students enrolled uh, as of March in our in charter schools, and that would be cyber schools and brick and mortar. We have two local brick and mortar schools which are Howard Gardner and Feld Charter. And then there are several statewide cyber schools that our two students participate in. The overall budget for 2021 is $1.5 million for a charter school. And that's a mix of regular ed students and special ed students. And they're, they're different rates based on um, whether they're a regular ed student or a special ed student. Our costs for the 1920 school year, a regular ed student cost us 18,000 per student and our special ed students cost us 37,000. There are several bills that are out in the state legislature for charter school reform. They're looking at changing some of those funding levels or potentially changing the special ed formula so that it is not so steep that it would be a, a tiered formula based on the, the actual needs of the student. So um, they are looking at some of that. Nothing has passed yet, but you know, there is potential out there. Matt, would you like to weigh in on that? Yeah, I, last week we had a meeting with the local superintendents and uh, local representatives from um, Northeastern Pennsylvania and senators, um, you know, talking about budgets, what, what are we looking at? And um, this charter school situation and essentially just about every district that we discussed with mm -hmm. that had a deficit, uh, the charter school expenses would cover the cost of the deficit. And that is right in line with what you'll see coming up is in our budget as well. So we made it clear to them that this is a serious concern uh, where our funds are going and how it's being utilized. Um, and many of them agree that it's kind of egregious. Um, I guess, depending on what side of the, the coin you're on. But um, so there is a push, you'll, you'll see 
on the next agenda, there will be a resolution for charter school reform uh, that we would like to put in front of the board for a vote. So just to, um, to keep this in the back of your minds, I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but hopefully there is some, some sort of form that, that would cap uh, the, these funds from leaving our districts. Thank you. The next item on our list is contracted services. And our biggest expense under here is our transportation. Um, the cost index for the 2021 school year did increase 2.3% over the current year. Uh, I have estimated expenses of just over 3.8 million. How that funding level works, um, we have those in expenses and we do cover expenses at state formula. So we reimburse all of our contractors, whether they're van contractors or bus contractors at state formula. By doing that, the state will reimburse us a large portion of that expense. So if you recall on the revenue side, I had about $2.9 million in revenue on transportation coming in from the state. What the state does is they cover, they expense us half mil of our market value, which in the latest figures that we have is about $865,000. Anything above that, as long as we're paying out at state formula, gets reimbursed to us from the state. So that's how it, we, we factored those numbers based on what our actual expenses, and then I put the corresponding revenue that's covered anything above that $865,000 for, for the district. Extracurricular activities. This covers our student activities, um, FCCLA, FBLA, uh, the musical, all, all kinds of student activities, anything extracurricular is about 320,000 in expensive. And then our sports programs, about 737,000. Supplies. So for next year, um, most of the years, the last few years, we've been spending about 150,000 on textbooks. And over the last few weeks, we've been trying to cut back on several of our expenditures, see where we could you know, make some cuts and still do a good job of providing what the students need. And so we did look at bringing that textbook series budget down from 150 to 125 to help out in the instructional expenses. Under building and grounds, we are currently doing the sports complex renovations um, for the summer of 2020. They did start at the beginning of May. They were able to start the renovations a little bit earlier than scheduled. Uh, that expense is paid for through a borrowing that we did in 2019. Does not affect our 2021 budget, but I just wanted to put out there is that something that's going on right now. We need to look at whether or not we can replace any of the vehicles this coming year or just replace um, possibly a tractor. We did reduce that expenditure on our budget just to try to save a little bit of money. So I think we're gonna try to just replace a tractor if possible um, and not replace a vehicle this year. We do have several of our vans that we use that could potentially be replaced. And if we had more funding, we probably would replace one this year, but we'll look at, do, at doing that in a future year. Fuel oil bids, they're pending at this point. I've not done the fuel oil bids with us being closed. I don't have the ability to do the bids uh, properly with having open doors for people to bring in bids, take bids. And also we're kind of waiting on UGI as far as whether or not the natural gas will go to the Robert D. Wilson building. Robert Wilson right now is oil-based, but they are looking at putting natural gas in Last we heard about two months ago is that that was going to go through this summer and that by the fall we would be off fuel oil for Robert Wilson building and the only building currently with fuel oil would be the high school middle school complex. Um, we're kind of waiting to see if that that everything is happening with COVID-19 and the pandemic whether or not that would change the timeline of the UGI installing that natural gas into RDW. So at this point I'm not sure where that's going and we've kind of put that fuel oil bit on hold. We will pick that up again as soon as I can and we'll get some solid numbers there. But in the for the budget, I made the assumption that Robert Wilson will still be on fuel oil 
and they did uh, expense that accordingly. This is a breakdown of our debt service. Um, we have expenditures for our debt service are current. We have three series that are out there right now. We have series of 2015, which will be completed in the 21-22 school year. Series of 16, which will be completed in the 24-25 school year. And then the series of 19, which will finish in the 26-27 school year. So that lists all of our debt currently and the total overall expenditures that we will pay over those several years. Act one, um, currently act one for the district allows us to increase our expenses, our millage expenses by 2.6%. If we calculate that into mills, it's 0.444 of a mill increase. Um, in January, the board did, did decide to stay within the index for the 2021 school year and not seek any referendum exception. So that 2.6% or 0.444 of a mil would be the maximum that we can increase our budget to help with our expenditures. Okay, Rose. Jeff Kogolski here. Yes. I got I got a question for you on the uh, act. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I understand it, but if we do not raise taxes, does that affect the maximum that the uh, act allows us to go up to each year? So what I mean is we don't raise taxes this year. Next year, the most we can uh, go towards the act may drop from 2.6 to 2.4, just using that as an example. Is that true? Or do you no, have to so each year is looked at individually. So the, uh, the Act 1 index comes off the statewide average weekly wage and the consumer, uh, the cost index, consumer price index, sorry. Um, it, they look at those factors for the previous 12 months. So if we do or do not increase taxes this year, it does not affect the percentage that, that we would get the following year for the Act 1 index. It is individually looked at on a yearly basis. Okay, thank you. Sure. So what that equates to in dollars. So if we were to go to the the two percent, two point six percent increase, our current millage is seventeen point zero eight zero four. If we added the percentage that we could, it would go to seventeen point five two. If we take the Act One index, the increase would equate to about six hundred and eighty eight thousand dollars to help with our current budget. And just to, to look at that from a, a property tax perspective, for every $100,000 in assessment on your property, that would increase your property taxes for school taxes by about $44. So, I mean, it's, if someone's thinking about it for themselves based on their assessment, so if your assessment is $200,000, you're looking at $88. If your assessment was $50,000, then you're looking at like $22 in increased property taxes, just as an idea. Um, I looked at a couple different scenarios and if we were to look at a one, just going, because we have the ability to go up to the index, we do not have to go to the 2.6. Uh, if we looked at going at one and a half percent, that would increase our millage by 0.2562 to 17.3366. If we look at it that way, then we're seeing, we would see an increase in our our funding by about 397,000. And again, with $100,000 in assessed property, you'd be looking at about a $25.62 increase in your taxes for school real estate taxes in the fall. Currently our fund balance, um, fund balance at the end of the 18-19 school year is $11.2 million. We've committed just over 400,000 of that for retirement incentives payable. So those retirees who already have retired and we know the expense of what we need to pay out over the next several years, um, that's committed money of our fund balance. Assigned um, $7.8 million and that's looking at several future years of healthcare increases, retirement increases, and some capital projects that we could potentially have coming up. So we've assigned some money to that 
And then we have an unassigned fund balance of about $2.9 million. We did budget to use about $660,000 of that fund balance during the current 1920 school year. Um, I've kind of looked at our numbers through April to see where we're at. And I think expenditure wise, we should be pretty close to what we had on target. We'll have a little bit of savings from some non-use of, of substitute money, substitute budgeted items. But on the revenue side, we still have the last quarter of delinquent taxes coming in and real estate transfer tax. And I think those based on the situation in the, in the country right now that those numbers may be down. So it's hard to predict where we're gonna end up, but I think we may be close to using some of that um, $660,000 that we had budgeted from the current fund balance during this current school year. So we did put a couple scenarios together and this is stuff that the, the board will need to look at and, and hopefully give me some direction tonight. I know we're meeting next week, the 20th, to have our, our tentative budget approved. Um, the tentative budget would be on display for this, uh, the, uh, for the public for 30 days. So from May 20th through June 24th, I think is the date of our finalized budget. And hopefully by the time we get to our finalized budget, we'll have some more known factors from the state level and the federal level what's gonna happen with that CARES money, what's gonna happen with state, um, state funding across the board. So hopefully by then we'll have some numbers, but to get going on our tentative budget, what needs to be passed by the end of this month, we need some direction. So I've put a couple scenarios together for us to look at uh, based on the revenues and expenditures that we've presented here tonight. We have a deficit of about 1.5, almost $1.6 million. Um, this revenue does not include any of the Act 1 index increases that we talked about, the 2.6 or the 1.5. I have a couple other factors. If anybody has questions, I just kind of put a couple of the scenarios together. Um, currently, the state legislator is considering a bill that would freeze property taxes for the 1920, at the 1920 rates. That at this point, we're not sure what's going to happen with that. It does not seem to have the support that it would need to pass at this point, but we still have to wait, wait and see. Um, when we, when I sent out some preliminary numbers back in April, from that point, we were at about 1.7 million um, in a deficit at that point. And we've cut about 150,000 of those, of expenditures out. I did have the opportunity to meet with Jeff Gagalski, our board treasurer, and we kind of went line item by line item and tried to see where we can cut. Unfortunately, as we've talked about before and you've seen in some of the slides earlier, but 85% of our budget is fixed cost. So it's hard to cut in any of those areas. So we focused on supplies and equipment and things like that, um, that where we could you know, make some changes and, and reduce some, rate, some, some items to kind of bring this down. But after going through the whole budget, you know, we're looking at, what we were able to take out was about $150,000. Scenario two was if we took the 2.6% Act 1 increase, if we increased the um, property taxes by that 2.6 and generated an additional 688,000, we would have a deficit of about 900,000. And actually, I should have factored this in in the last one too, but if we add in the expense of that life skills classroom, you're adding in another 187,000. So then your deficit would be like almost $1.1 million in this scenario. If we add in the life skills classroom, which we do believe we need to do. Um, and then take the rest out of our fund balance. Scenario three is if we didn't go to the full index of the 2.6 and just looked at going at one and a half percent, that one and a half percent would generate th just under $400,000. And then we would take the remaining balance from fund balance. If we fact that's the one point, just under $1.2 million deficit. But if we factored in the life skills class, we're looking at still about a $1.3 million deficit. 
Al Rose, if I may interject, sure. with the, you know, again, looking at cost savings with having the students here, uh, I mean, we don't have a, a hard number on that at the moment, but there would be, it wouldn't completely be that number. We have one student that's placed right now, mm -hmm. so it would be the cost of that student that's placed, right. um, which I don't so have an offset. exact number, but I'd say anywhere from thirty to fifty thousand dollars, possibly. Yeah. Okay. So um, with the Act One Index, we need to keep in mind that this is um, this coming year and the future years, we're still under the Act One Index. It is based on the statewide average weekly wage. It is based on the cost index or the consumer price index for the state. So we have the op option this year of a 2.6% increase. Um, don't know what that will look like next year. We don't look, know what some of the other state level funding will look like next year, just because of everything that's happening right now in our economy. So it is something we do need to consider for this next, for this upcoming year, what we can do and how we should go about doing it. The governor did certify that we have the homestead, the gambling money so that we have the homestead farmstead rebate that will go out as in current years. Um, the dollar amount for this year is the 876,995. Uh, statewide, the average is about 10% reduction in property taxes, which averages about $200 per property per eligible household. Um, in the current 1920 school year, we saw about $213 reduction per eligible homestead and eligible farmstead. My estimates for the um, 2021 year is about $214. So it's roughly the same um, in the rebate that we've had over the last couple of years. We've ranged anywhere from two Two hundred dollars up to about two fifteen. So um, my estimates for right now is about two hundred and fourteen per eligible homestead farmstead for this coming year. Any questions or discussion about the the items that we presented tonight? Rick Rose, do you you have a uh, a preferred option out of those options that you presented uh, looking forward? Uh, which, which would be best, whether we do the head for the 1.5 and take more out of the fund balance or get closer to the index? I don't know if I'd consider it, like say that it's my preferred. I think that it, it probably would be best for us financially to go to the 2.6 but is that the best thing and the right thing to do at this point? I do believe that we need to do something. I think we need to, to increase slightly because I really don't know what's gonna happen state level and, I, and we don't know what's gonna happen next year. Um, that index level could be way down next year, it could be under 1% and we might be really tied as to what we can do um, for our funding level. So my recommendation we should look at the 2.6, but I think that if we can at least do a one and a half percent to try to help out and, you know, Dr. Barrett and I have talked extensively with our state organizations and our local superintendents and business managers and some of the things that we've discussed to try to help our property tax owners is looking at um, waiving that penalty at the end of the at the end of the year. So we currently offer a 2% discount in the first two months of property tax season. So that's from August 1st through September 30th. And then from October 1st to November 30th, we'd offer just a face value payment for property taxes. And then from December 1st to December 30th, there would be a 10% penalty on paying taxes. A lot of the districts have looked at possibly waiving that 10% penalty for that final month. So that from October 1 till December 31, we would just 
offer an acceptance at face value and waive the penalty um, to try and help out some of the taxpayers in the district because I know, you know, the economy is not the greatest right now and, and people are struggling. But I think if we can possibly do the increase and then offer that reduction in the penalty or the elimination of the penalty, there is state law that was passed that allows us to do that. Um, Matt, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, I, and I think a lot of districts, uh, again, I know you know, the districts that are surrounding us are facing deficits similar to ours, if not greater. Um, and they're struggling with this decision as well. So they're trying, some districts, uh, I know throughout the Valley are, are raising them to the index while others are considering you know, freezing for the year. Uh, I, it's district by district, but I know um, many of us are, are, are all facing these deficits that are fairly significant. This is Ethan Wood. I have a question, Rose. Um, if in the future we do need to raise taxes above the index, what would we need to do to do that? I mean, I know districts do that semi-regularly at least. Uh, what's, what does the process look like? So there's an application process and it, um, there's only certain items that you qualify for to go above that index. One of the items that I know is still available to us would be uh, our special ed costs. So if our special ed costs were increasing beyond a certain percentage and that percentage and that those rates change on a yearly basis. The state sets up some guidelines and it's based on our historical special ed expenses. Um, it's an application process. It's the start of our budget process in January instead of waiting till May to start our budget process. So there's um, some different timelines to follow if we were to consider that. Um, in past years, there was also some ability to do referendum exceptions for salary increases, retirement rate increases, and also for, um, I think it was debt service. There were several other items. They've been phased out over the years, so we don't really qualify for any of those right now. I don't believe there's anything other than the special ed that we could re apply for if we were eligible. And it depends on the year and the previous expenses, whether or not we're eligible. Thank you. Hey, this is Matt Meir. I also believe there's a court component that goes along with that. If we're up above the index, I've had to deal with that with some municipalities. We've had to get some court orders to go above that. That's it. Matt, I think you're right. I think if we were to go above the index and then still need money above the referendum piece, then it would go through the courts and it would be, I, I think, an item on the um, on the election, during the elections. It would be something that would be decided by the taxpayers. But you have to raise your taxes to the index, exhaust all of your referendum exceptions, and then that third option would be through the courts. Yes, that's my understanding, Rose. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Gogolsky here. Um, Rose and I, when we met and looked at the budget before we had met, I uh, took a look at what the 1617 budget numbers were versus the tentative 2021 budgets. And, and some of the things that really jumped out uh, were our local, state, and federal revenue sources. Uh, four years ago, 64, over 64% 64 of our local revenue sources. Uh, were funded you know, locally. This current budget, it's 61. So there's a trend in that locally, we are not funding the district uh, like we had been. And the expense side of things over these four years has risen 10%. So the budget basically has gone up uh, expenditure wise 10%. Revenues that were brought in have only risen seven and a quarter percent. So we have like a 2.5% deficit or um, funding deficit. 
And I know we've been light on increasing taxes over that four year period. And it really jumps out now. And I basically extrapolated the numbers over the next four years. And again, if things just hit the way they are now and how they had been over the past four years, uh, we would be exhausting our, our fund balance over the next four years, or at least that's the way it was projected. So, um, and, and fortunately, we're still in a good position fund balance wise. It's going to turn the other way, though, pretty quickly. Um, if we don't really start to consider uh, doing something either in the form of starting to increase taxes at the index or looking to cut expenditures, hard cut expenditures somewhere else. Um, so I just thought I'd throw that in for us to think about. Um, the climate that we're in right now, I think it's, I personally would hate to see taxpayers burdened uh, under the circumstances. I do think maybe if we met somewhere in the middle, um, rose that one and a half percent. However, I'm just warning after we're through this, I think the next few years, it's going to be hard not to hit the um, index in terms of keeping us funded. Otherwise, we're going to we're going to eat up that fund balance pretty quickly. Thank hey, you, Jeff. Jeff, it's Joe. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, <clears throat> it's been we've been safe. We've been we've been trying to save as much as we can and not increasing taxes as much as we can. And from what you just said, you know, you and Rose met and, and that um, if we don't start doing something four or five, six years from now, it's going to be back to where where it was five, eight years ago or something like that. Right. Safe to say, right? That's kind of what you're found out or what you're thinking, yeah. or what you're projecting. We've had, and, and Rose can definitely attest to this, we've had fortunate things happen over True. these past four years to really help our fund balance. Right, uh, but right. the thing that sticks out quite a bit to me, looking at how the budget was, is we we per, um, we funded 64% of the budget locally. We're only funding 61% now. Right. And right. our costs are going up and we're just not increasing from a local standpoint. And again, the climate that we're in with the state and the federal just basically printing money, um, yeah. under this whole i don't know I, i'm i'm concerned um from a state and federal funding level where this is going to shake out moving forward too so um yeah okay yeah i just uh i, I kind of agree with you on the whole thing um, if you don't do anything what's going to happen like we just talked about is going to happen sooner if you do do too much Nobody's going to want that, especially like you said, and everybody knows what the climate is right now. Um, so it's almost like you have to do something just to keep it steady, so to speak. I, I, that's my feelings. Yep. Yeah, my thought was to not raise it at all. But then after really right. thinking about it and looking at the numbers and how it can look in the future, uh, boy, I, I don't even think the index would be enough if you know, down the road, yeah, not knowing where that index is going to be, like Rose had mentioned. So it's concern. Um, this is uh, Bernice. I just wanted to add, uh, I understand we have to do some form of increase, but in my heart of hearts, there's no way I could do a 2.6% increase um, just because of where we are in this time. And I do understand we have to increase something, um, but I, I just know the 2.6, I think now would just be too much. Yeah, Rosa, or That's I mean, uh, Bernice, th th Jeff here, that, yeah, I wasn't recommending going to the full index based on the climate either. I, no, I, my, no, my opinion is I meeting understand. somewhere in, in the middle there. I agree, I understand, but I just had to say in my heart of hearts for anyone who's thinking we have to go to the whole 2.6, I just can't. Um, do that, but I do agree there has to be some form. Whether you know you hate to see it done at this point in time, but if we don't, like you said, we're going to be in big trouble. So, I agree. Uh, this is Rick. It doesn't seem to me that if we do the, uh, if we don't do at least the 1.5, though, we're going to we're just kicking it down the road. We're going to have larger increases 
before our debt service falls off in right. 2027. This is Dana. Is there a a percentage of what what we do not bring in locally? Like what what taxes aren't paid? Dana, this is Rose. Uh, we collect over the course of a year between our current tax collection and our delinquent. We collect about ninety eight percent of our tax base. Is that the question you're asking? We get about ninety percent. Um, in current taxes, and then over the course of the year through delinquent tax collection, we get another 8%, just roughly over 8%. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. I just wanted yeah. to see what the percentage of, you know, not not collecting, and I'm sure that that number is going to it potentially go up with the climate that we're in right now. Correct. There, we could see a, a change in that. Um, we do look at that uh, historically, so we track that for many years, uh, the trends and in our percentage of collection. So we watch that closely and I do use those factors to figure out where we would be that following year. I looked back into the 08, 07, 08 school year um, and 07, 08, 08, 09, which was the last uh, time we had somewhat of a recession and it was that following year, not like the 20, so like not like what we're going into now that 2021, it was more that that next year. So the 21, 22 year where we could potentially take a bigger hit in our percentage collection. And the percentage of collection that you have in the local now, is that what we've been going at or did you um, factor in a lower one for the following year just based upon what potentially could be coming down the road? I did downgrade that just a little bit because we've been um, the 90% is what I had used in this current year. We're a little, we're slightly above that in current collections. Uh, we still have the last quarter of delinquent collections to look at, and I'm not sure where that's going to be. So it's hard to predict that at this point. I did downgrade our percentage of uh, revenue for our real estate transfer tax. And I downgraded our uh, collections for interest because um, I know the interest rates have been going down on our money. Um, so there are several different areas where I did downgrade and, and try to take into account what a, a, you know I feel that we won't get. It, you know, it's still hard right now to predict because this is all so new. But we tried to be conservative in what we listed as revenue. And Dana, if I may add to that, in conversations um, that we've had um, with other, other districts and state level uh, organizations, you know, there's some predictions that go anywhere from 10 to 20% reduction in tax collections. Yep, I, I wouldn't doubt that. And then you also have up on the page, the gambling dollars, obviously they're closed right now. The amount that you have listed in here, is that from the previous year? And then we would get it the following year. How does that, how does the gambling stuff work? Because we obviously can't count on that for future years because who knows? I mean, they're not going to have disposable income. They're not going to be going gambling it away. I mean, listen, there's definitely people that will, but this number is probably going to go down as well. Yeah, this is our guaranteed, what's listed here on this page is the, our guaranteed number for the 2021 school year. But yes, we have had conversations um, at a state level that it probably won't be available at that level for the following year, but this is, um, and it's based on a certain range and I think it ends in December of the year. So this figure is based on what happened in 2019 with the gambling money. So this is guaranteed for us for 2021. But again, like you said, like futuristically, I don't know if we'll see that level. Um, I had a few nervous, um, days waiting for this number to come out because I didn't know if there, they would factor some of that clo those closures in and reduce our number for 2021, but they didn't. They did keep it at the levels they had promised us and kept at the, fu the funding at the level that we've been seeing over the last 14 years with the gambling money. Hey Rose, it's Joe. Just a quick question. You were talking about the 2007-8 recession the following year um taxes do you remember was it pretty significant that the following year that taxes weren't paid i didn't know if you said that or not I, i'm sorry if you did 
I don't have those numbers with me today. I apologize. Um, I did look at that when we were looking at the numbers. I, it was a definite dip. I, I don't think we've ever dropped a really low in our collection. Um, just, percentages. I, it, yeah, just, I wouldn't hold it any number. I just, yeah. just wonder if you remembered like saying, holy cow, that's a lot, you know, or, or if it was just a little bit or, you know, that, that's kind of what I was just yeah, just trying to Yeah, I, I would, up. from what I recall looking at, I think it was a, a small amount. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. I came into this, uh, this is Ethan Wood. I came into this meeting thinking that I, um, I wouldn't want to raise taxes at all in this environment, but um, it does sound like that for the medium, even the medium term, uh, security of the district we we should at least raise it somewhat so i i think i'm in favor of the the one one and a half percent proposal this is rick i'm uh, i'm also in at least that much i my biggest fear is that we don't do enough and then a year or two or three down the road we're going to have to make it up and go beyond that index so i think we really have to uh, be forward looking here and make sure we Hit a, an adequate number and while keeping it as low as possible. I agree with you, Rick. Ethan. Yes, this is this is Bill. Um, I think I agree as well. Uh, we have to do something. Uh, Rose can talk about the fact that uh, when around the time I was first on the board, uh, we had just that situation where the taxes had to be raised quite dramatically because there had been several years when uh, they hadn't been, correct, Rose? It was... Um, yes, that was in the early 2000s. Yes. The millage was different then, but I think uh, in one year, uh, the taxes were raised. It was 20 mil, 18 or 20 mils, but that was, they were figured differently. But I remember we had a meeting uh, when... Um, the board was, I wasn't on the board at that time, but it was just before I was, became a board member, I was attending board meetings and the um, board was considering cuts like uh, in non-mandated programs like say kindergarten and so on. And I remember there were people there who um, were representing each of the areas uh, that were proposed uh, to be cut and they said, well, of course, you know, we don't want you to cut kindergarten. We don't want you to cut the band. We don't want you to cut sports. We don't. So I, I, in the end, uh, there was quite a dramatic increase, I believe. I don't believe it. It was, it was a fact. Yes, Bill, there were um, in the early 2000s, there was a big increase in, in millage. That, that was that because was... of the previous years, correct? In other words, there hadn't been enough. Yeah, there was a couple of years where there wasn't any increase. And then it, there was a requirement for a large increase in taxes. Um, and at the point, at that time, there was, and it's hard to tell millage because it was before the Wayne County had reassessed, so the millage numbers were totally different. Um, and it was also before the Act 1 right. went into place where we were um, under a certain percentage of increases. At the time, it could be, you can increase whatever, you know, you need it at the time. And we ended up having to do that probably over a two year period. Right. At this point, we are, you know, constrained by the Act One, and we really can only increase by the Act One index. This year it is up to the 2.6. Next year, I mean, based on what's been happening in the economy, I, I doubt that's going to be anywhere near the 2.6%. Right. So we don't want that to happen again if possible. Yeah. Correct. Happen at that point. This is Jeff Gogolsky here, um, you know, and hearing what everybody's thinking, I, I would say to go at a minimum 1% below what the index is, which is 1.6%, um, you know, and as high as two. So somewhere in that range would be my, my thought for, for this year. Uh, so I'm okay, somewhere between two to 1.6. This is Rick, I'd feel comfortable up around the two. I think we, uh, if we do that this year and then for some reason we do get funded well or something good happens to us next year, 
maybe uh, we won't have to raise as much at that point. But uh, I think with the deficit we've got, if we don't keep that number at a pretty robust percentage, we're going to pay for it down the line. Would you be happy with the 1.75% um, increase instead of going to the full two? I think uh, realistically this year we should, I know it's a tough year, but I'm not taking emotion out of it. We would, with this deficit, we'd head right to the 2.6. So I'd really feel comfortable right around that too. Uh, if everybody else wants to stay a little lower, to, you know, to, for a, to feel good about it. I'm okay with that. I'm just afraid it may not be enough. I'd feel more comfortable, Rick, under the two, to be honest. I would feel the most comfortable under two as well, says Dana. I don't, I would not vote for above two. I think we'd all love to see it. Well, even under the 1.5, but I think uh, pragmatically that that could be a problem, like I said, down the road. So if we, this is Dana again. If we, in the past, in the 2007, 2008, we brought to the public options, you know, in regards to sports and, um, you know, other options that we could do, can we do that again to see if there's a way to, to not increase it at all? I mean, there's, if there, if it was on the table back then to remove things and the public said no, give them that option a, a, again. Dana, this is Bernice. Um, unfortunately, I think that's a, I, although it's, you know, I see what you're saying and I think we've all been there trying to figure out, do you do pay to play in all those scenarios? I just don't think there's enough saying and I understand your point of bringing it to the public. Um, and I understand also about going below the two, um, but that's a tough boat to be in when you bring it to the public to say, okay, let me know what you want to cut. It's, that's really, that's tough. I don't think we're necessarily at that point right now, this time that we need to do that though, do we? I mean, maybe next year, the year down the road, we might have to, but I don't, you know, from what I'm hearing, we're good. We're okay. Nobody wants yeah. to raise taxes. We have to, so that we're safe down the road. And that's just the, you know, Joe can be the logic. It's just how I think about it. You, I don't want them to raise. Nobody does, but if we don't do and think ahead five, six years from now something if we don't raise you know it, it's not going to be good and, and it'll be worse and, and you know to to ask to cut now things i don't i don't tell me if i'm wrong anybody i'd like please because like, i i don't think that we need to do that right now i i hope not this is rick joe and i know we and we spent the last four years trying to restore as as bill was saying before some of the cuts that had been made and things like replace 15 year old vehicles and things that really were necessary. So I yep. hate to go backwards at this point with, with cuts, unless, you know, it really, really gets crazy. Uh, these are still for hundred thousand dollars of assessment. These still, these numbers aren't crazy. They're, they're it's always more than you want to do, but it, it's, uh, it's in the realm of reasonable, I believe. Jeff Kogolski here again. Um, the fund balance still were healthy and we're aware of potential issues. So we're talking about it now. Um, you know, we don't know what the next years to four years are gonna be. Sports right now only is $737,000 of the budget. And with the healthy fund balance at this point, I don't think that's something we need to, to address at this point. Um, but year to year, we just keep monitoring where we're at at this point and going forward, I think then we'll have to start looking at some of these other options. But for now, um, you know, I think between the one point se the one point seven five, I did the calculation. It's about thirty uh, point thirty mil, so it's thirty cents for every thousand dollars of assessed taxes that it would equate to um, if we did a one point seven five. Which I think, again, under the climate right now, I I'm comfortable with. What's the 1.75 come to then per mil? It's like it's like 0.30. It's almost 0.30 mils increase. Okay. 
right. so that's 30 cents for every thousand dollars of assessed tax right rose i'm right on that am i right <laughs> yes yeah. yeah you're right so okay. if you're looking okay. at um a hundred thousand dollars in assessed value just to keep it simple math you're looking at about 30 30 bucks yeah right okay Hey, this is Matt Meir just chiming in. I, I just want to say that I think, Rose, you've done a great job with the presentation, and Dr. Barrett, you're doing a great job there. Uh, I just wanted to get, for perspective, the our county, Wayne County, at the yeah. end of 2019, raised taxes 25% because they had not raised taxes for 10 out of the past 12 years. Very true, man. Very true. So, and, so I just throw I just throw that out there. So when I hear you guys talking about going up a little bit, uh, you know, and I'm not a voting member by any means, but my analysis is I'd rather go up one to two as opposed to get hammered in the spring with 25%. So I just throw that out there. I think you guys are doing good work and I'm going to mute myself again. Thank you, Matt, though, and we have seen that uh, looking at these things statistically in the past, if we didn't do uh, at least a minimal, and on top of the minimals that we've done over the last few years, we've also been very lucky to have some windfalls that are likely not going to happen, so I think we've got to pick up the ball here and make sure that we're slow and steady wins the race, we've got to keep going at a, as slow a pace as we comfortably can, but still enough to keep everything adequately funded. You know, re realistically, it's Joe. Realistically, when you think about this, you, you raise the taxes and really realize that you know people aren't going to be able to pay. They probably aren't going to be. It's just that's what's going to happen. So, I, I, you know, it's a tough, tough thing to say or tough way to put it, but it's reality almost right now. And I, and I think that's where I'm that's where I'm standing on. I, I feel, you know, somewhere around the one seven five, I think is good. One eight, one nine, something like that. What you know, but. People aren't going to be able to pay. It's just it's going to it's going to happen. So that's why I asked what percentage was in there, factored in for next sure. year, because it's it's inevitable that we're going sure. to have a larger percentage from this year to next year that aren't paying. Yep, you're right. Is there interest? This is Rose again. Is there interest in waiving that penalty phase of our funding to try and help someone, give them an extra two months to pay at face value? rather than be paying at, at penalty. Is anyone? Rose, I think that's a great idea. That's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, I agree, Absolutely. right? That'd be and, fine. I'm on board. Agreed. And I know that there's, there's like a payment option thing where you could do like three payments. Is there any way to spread it out? Yeah, I, I know it might stink that it would be coming in over drips and drabs versus three different periods, but is there a way to split it a little bit more to make it more economical for people instead of coming up with that huge number yeah right currently we have um with the installments we have it over um three i think. have three day three periods uh yeah. we could uh, like stretch that out a little bit i mean under our current laws we still have to finish by december 31st but we can make that last payment like make one the first one by September 1, the second one maybe October, and the third one by December, because I think currently the last one has to be finished in November. Uh, we can look at stretching that out a little. It really wouldn't affect our budget, um, or I shouldn't say affect, it shouldn't hurt us by giving them a little bit longer time to make those installments. I think that would be another opportunity to try to help them um, to be able to pay their taxes. I think that's a good idea too. Yeah, I think that's great. So when I, I write up the motions for next week, so we have our, our tentative budget um, adoption meeting on the 20th, I will write it, I will write the tax laws up or the tax advertisements up, there will be no penalty phase. So our phase phase will go from October 1 through December 31 with no penalty phase, correct? Yes, that's great, Rose. Yeah. And then we'll stretch out the installment payments. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me right now as to the exact dates, but we'll stretch that out to give them a little bit of extra time to make those installments, those that qualify for installment payments. 
Is it worth it to just keep the three or can we increase it so that they have, they, they're paying less each time? Maybe that would be more beneficial to them. I'm not 100% sure on that. Matt Mir, are you still there? Do you know if that's, if the three was the actual law or if that could be changed? I, I don't yeah. know that offhand. So what I've that. seen from my, this is Matt Mir, from my townships is exactly what you're talking about, Rose, and the extensions so that you're not charging a penalty and stuff. I'm not sure about a declining payment type thing. I have not seen that uh, in the six townships I represent in the county. So I could check into it, but I'm not sure about that. I've just seen where deadlines are extended, like you're talking about, uh, almost as if you're ultimately waiving any penalty phase. And that's all I'm, I'm aware of too, Matt. Um, I don't believe we can make it a four, point installment, I think it is based on the current laws, the three point installment, like three, three installments. I mean, we could both look into it though. I don't know if you, if you get some time tomorrow to look at that and I'll look also at my um, paperwork. Yep, I can do that. And then, okay, so no penalty, stretch out the installments. We, we will look in to see if it's possible to do a four, like a fourth installment. So there's four pieces coming in. Um, not sure, but at least we'll look at it, stretching out that time frame for the installments. And then as far as the property tax increase, do you want me to put the numbers together at a 1.75? And just remember it's, it's tentative. So we still have another opportunity to make changes during the month of June before we pass our final budget. And at that point, we may have some additional information, state level or even local level on our property taxes. Uh, we might have some more that could help us make a final decision in June because we're look, we're not looking to pass a final budget till June 24th, I think is the date we tentatively set for our final adoption. Um, is everybody okay with that? I'd be good with that. I think that's a great idea, yeah. I'd like to see two, but I'm okay at 1.75 if that's what everyone else would like to do. One point seven five. That would be what four hundred thirty, or, or am I going too high on that one, or a little higher? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but yeah, probably about four hundred fifty thousand, somewhere around there. Okay. But it's three, uh, Jeff Kogolski here. It's about it's three ninety seven at one point five. So yeah, you're you're probably around. I, I think the four thirty. So at a 1.2 deficit, that's only making up uh, a third of it. Yep. I mean, I'm okay with the 1.5. Next year, it'll grow again. We're going to have to keep making that up, and it's going to compound. So, again, yep. just on the I, I agree. Long too low. Well, even if we go to two, Rick, like you said, you know, and then Rose, um, we do get some extra cash or something that comes in. We can go back to 175. I think everybody's trying to keep it under two, but what's what's for now? What's a does it make a big difference if we start at two? It's it's another quarter, and if we can go back, then we go back to 175. I I don't know. I, either one is fine by me. Whatever you know, I'm I'm good with it. But. I'm fine at either two, but I'd still I'd continue to argue for the higher. I think it's uh, it's going to be safer, but I'll, I'll go with the majority. Rose, it's Bernice. I would just say, as of now, start at the 1.75. And if we go up, we go up. But let's just see where that takes us. Um, it's somewhere to start. And if we go to 1.9 or 2, um, we'll go. But let's just see if we can do it this route. OK, we will do, I'll put the numbers together for the tentative budget at 175 knowing that we may need to go up a little or go down a little with a finalized number, depending on what we know and what happens within the next, you know, 30 to 
40 days that we have before we have to pass the final budget. Is that okay with everyone? That's great with me, Rose. Thank you so much for all you did. It's good with me too. And Rose, um, very nice work on the, the presentation. It was very clear. Yes, thank you. you. This is Bill. Rose, you always do a great job. And uh, thank you. Thank you for your work on this. Thank yeah, you, Jeff Kogolski here, Rose. Um, again, I appreciate you letting me take some time out of your busy day to sit with you, go over the budget, did a great job as well every year. So thanks again for all your hard work. Thank you. Likewise, Rose, it's Joe. It's going to be the same thing. Great job. It's easy to follow. Very easy. Thank you. And if any questions come up between now and next week, please just let me know. I'll try to get some um, of the tentative reports out to you, the, the actual PDE forms that will need to be approved. I'll work on that in the next day or two and try to get them out to you by Friday so you have time to review them. Um, I've been monitoring the email account that is set up for public comment. And at this point, we do not have any public comment, public questions that have come in. Um, so I don't believe we need to address anything at this point. Anybody else have any questions or final comments? Hey Rose, just real quick, this presentation that you have, this is on one of the emails that you sent, right? The, yes. One of the attachments? Okay, yeah, I have. I'm looking at it now just so I can look at it again. Okay, that's yep. all, thank you. It's there and it's also, we did just put this out earlier this afternoon, we did put it out on our, our website too. So yep. um, it is out there for anyone looking to get a copy. Okay, thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're good, Rose? Yep, if there's no further comments, Bernice, if you wanna call for adjournment. Yes, I do, I call for an adjournment. Thank you everyone so much for your time. Thank you, good night. Thank you everyone, have a good evening. Thanks Rose, thank thanks Matt. Thank you. Thank you everyone, have a great night.